The church defining its position on marital rape. A partnership formed to promote medical training. And the results are in from the Junior John Canoe Parade. The Bahamas Tonight Northern Edition starts now. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all. I'm Megan Shepard. Thank you so much for tuning in. Topping news tonight, the church is making its stance known on another topical issue in the country. The newly elected president of the Grand Bahama Christian Council is condemning the act of rape under any circumstance and is calling for a separation of this act from the sanctity of marriage. And um, it's almost like an oxymoron. Um, President of the Grand Bahama Christian Council, Rev. Dr. Robert Lockhart, giving his take on the marital rape debate in the country. He says he in no way believes that any man has a right to rape any woman, whether they are strangers, she is his girlfriend, fiancé, or wife. He says he has been researching how the international community handles this issue, particularly the United States. Are there are laws that have to do with marital rape. It's not called marital rape. It's called spousal rape. And they have spousal rape laws in all 50 states of America. But I can see the wisdom in not calling it marital rape because rape has nothing to do with marriage. Okay? If a woman is raped by a husband, um, that, has, you know, that has nothing to do with marriage. That is a, a husband raping his wife. So I agree. Um, and I think the Attorney General said it. Um, as they, if they do introduce laws, it would not be called marital rape. I cannot remember exactly the term that he used, and I was glad to hear that. Reverend Lockhart says that the church is also concerned about the particulars of the law. First of all, what the law is going to look like, um, under what circumstances would a man be considered to have raped his wife? Because in um, chapter 99 of the Sexual Act, Article 15, it says that if a man forces have sex with his wife without her consent, that is considered to be rape. I think one of the only things that it probably does not address is if they are married and still living together in the same house. And I think that's probably where the little, you understand what I mean? I can probably see the, <coughs> the challenge with two persons that are married, they're not divorced, they're not separated, they're living in the same house, you know, it's almost unless the husband really physically harms her, um, you ask yourself practically, how would you ever um, carry out that law? How legally and practically, how would you prove that a man raped his wife in the privacy of their home where both of them agreed to live? He says the church is also concerned about connecting marriage to rape. When viewed from a church perspective, he notes that marriage is an act of consent, and when two people decide to get married, intimacy is almost automatically assumed. If marriage is an act of consent, then I do think, depending on how the marital laws are written, it could change what marriage, that aspect of what is assumed in marriage. That that when I get married and we sign in the house and I say I do and all the other vows that I go through, that I must not assume um, that my wife wants to be intimate with me. I still got to, you understand what I mean? And so that's, that's the challenge there. And if we take that away, I've looked in some other countries where they do have marital laws and they said that assumption um, does not exist. That even when a man and a woman gets married, he must not assume um, that there's consent. Meantime, a local corporate citizen is joining forces with the tertiary-level institutions to train young Bahamians in the medical field. Sabrina Brown has details. Financial controller at the Lukain Medical Center, Kajana Pinder, says there is a constant need for lab technicians, and she's encouraging young Bahamians to consider a career in this field. 
The medical facility is partnering with local colleges to assist persons who have chosen this course of study. Lukai Medical Center is always pleased to assist uh, the education programs around the community. Uh, we've been working with Tarif College for a number of years um, in the lab department and also in the pharmacy department. But particularly in the lab department, they have sent a number of students. Lab manager Yolanda Charlton is responsible for training the interns. This aspect provides the students with a unique opportunity to utilize the technical training that they had acquired in the lectures for uh, practice in real life. Triska Jones completed a two-year medical technician program at Tarif College. She completed her internship at the Lukayan Medical Center and was hired at the end of the program. She believes her college training has prepared her well for this noble profession. The reason why I chose to be a medical lab technician is because I love medicine. I like to solve stuff. I like machines. And so I like the fact that we're discovering and solving stuff. I find myself dreaming about stuff that I do at work. I find, yes, it's amazing. I, you have to actually have that gift inside of you in order to go through with it. President of Tarif College, Terence Archer, says he's pleased that the partnership with Lukain Medical is providing opportunities for young Bahamians. We were able to showcase one of our students that's been employed by Lukain Medical Center, which is a, a monumental thing in the life of Tarif, to be able to boast that um, of our students and the belief of the, um, the, the what Lukain Medical Center has in our program to even afford an opportunity to our students like this. Sabrina Brown, ZNS Network News. Turning to news from the crime beat, a quantity of dangerous drugs found over on Abaco. Reports are that shortly after 6 p.m. on Sunday, police received information that a suspicious package was found along the beach area in Crossing Rock. Officers responded and discovered five packages weighing eight pounds of suspected hash oil valued at $16,000. No arrest was made in this matter and police are investigating. Now, the unofficial results are in from the 19th annual Junior Junkanoo Parade held downtown Pioneers Way this past Saturday night. In the primary division, Martintown came in first, second, West End Primary, third, Mary Star of the Sea Academy, and Holmes Rock Primary came in fourth. Bishop Michael Eldon won the all-age division. The weekend school came in second, Hampton Academy came in third, and Slukaya International placed fourth in the now turning to the preschool division, first place went to Growing Years, Ladies Paradise placed second, Kindercare third, and Hampton Academy came in fourth. Sister Mary Patricia Russell Jr. won the junior division, Jack Hayward Jr. came in second. In the secondary division, St. George's came in first, Aid Mar Rock High placed second, and Total Education came in third. Now close to 30 schools were a part of the cultural show over the weekend. Still talking John Canoe, two-time defending champs, the Platinum Knights, taking time out yesterday to celebrate their recent win in church. Leader Thomas Curry heading the group as they visited Freeport Great Faith Ministry. Pastor Tyrone Thomas, who was also a member of the Platinum Knights, telling fellow John Canoeers that they should maintain Christian standards. People who profess to be Christians in the church, when they get among the friends, they're scared to testify. When they get in the job, no one would even know that they are a Christian. But the Bible said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good work and your God be glorified in heaven. I love the Lord. I love the church. But I love my joke new. Are you hearing me? And when I go to the joke new shack, it doesn't change my presence with the Lord. When I walk around the joke new shack, the joke new uh, uh, members of Platinum Joe will say, Ralph, and they will give me that respect. Stay with us, the Bahamas tonight, the Northern Edition continues in just a moment.